you guys to stand up. Let's sing together. Let's clap our hands. Let's get excited. Thank 
Oh 
from the Lord what I also pass unto you that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death death until he comes amen and that's what we are doing here together amen we'll celebrate we remember our Lord Jesus and we proclaim also amen with our lives what he has done for us until he comes back amen so i want to encourage you to invite you i'm sorry to participate of the communion right now and they will be praying There where you are. If you want to lift your hands, you can. Let's give thanks, God, for this moment of remembrance. Remembering what He has done on the cross. Father God, we give you so we're so thankful, Father, for what you have done for us. Here we stand. People of backgrounds of life backgrounds and cultures and different lives experiences and 
we are standing here, Father, just because of one thing, that is you who gave your life for us. And even though we don't think all the same, but we can be united in you, Jesus. We unite also with our brothers and sisters that are watching us live right now, Father. Father, just to give you thank you, thanks, Father, and to say thank you for what you have done on the cross, for the sacrifice, for taking our sin, dying in our place, so we can be forgiven, so we can give us a new opportunity to have life and abundance life, Father. Father, we don't deserve any of this, but by grace we receive through Jesus Christ. Father, thank you so much for reaching up to us. That day, Father, that you're reaching out to us and you give, you extend your, your hands towards us and bringing us out of death and sin. And now we are your sons and daughters. And it's all because of you, Jesus. And it's all because of what you have done on the cross. It's nothing that we can do. It's nothing, it's not any efforts that we did or because we are well behaved or because we somehow are special. No, Father, it's everything. It's only and it's solely by what Jesus did on the cross. And we are grateful for that. And we remember you today. And we proclaim your gospel and your word until you come back. Help us, Father, to proclaim you father the rest of our lives until we you come either either you come f f for us father or we die that we can proclaim with our lives you father thank you jesus thank you for this moment we honor you and bless you amen 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 you may be seated this morning say welcome to everybody who's here and those who are watching us online also as well thank you for joining this morning and I have a couple of announcements there's not really nothing different or too big happening in our church this month uh, the only different thing that is happening or out of the ordinary is youth conference and fine arts are coming up so it's going to start April 29th to May 1st. So if you have any teenager, they may not know about this and would like to go with the youth to this conference in fine art, um, you can contact me. You can talk to Pastor Christian, Hans, or Angel, or any other leaders, and then we can give you more details about it. Amen. And also we have youth services every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then we have Thursday's Bible study at 7 p.m. as well. So you have the opportunity to join us during the week to study God's Word. Amen. So I'm glad to be here with you. And it's an honor for me to be preaching this morning. And um, let's open our Bibles in Luke chapter 25. Verses all the way to 35, the turn, 10 verses we're going to be seeing today. And the title of my message today is The Cost of Following Jesus. Like Pastor Christian said last week, and it's so true that everything is going to cost us something. Amen. Everything that we do in life, things that really matter in life, is going to cost us something. Amen. The church. Uh, it's going to cost us something. The church is going to cost us uh, time. It's going to cost us uh, finances. It's, it's, it's going to cost us energy. Amen? And all kinds of sacrifices. And I know that many of you do sacrifices for years. I've been sacrificed, uh, doing sacrifices to, to come to this church, to support this church. And I want to say thank you. Amen? Uh, and that's why 
it's the Christian life is going to be it's going to cost us something amen so there's no any difference with following Jesus and that's what I want to lead today is that if we're going to follow Jesus the way that he wants to be followed it's going to cost us something amen if you're going to follow Jesus just the way you think that he wants to be followed and not really follow him, I don't think it's going to cost you too much. But if you're really going to follow Jesus the way he wants to be followed, as we're going to read here, then it's going to cost you everything. Amen? And it's going to cost us everything. So let's read the first three verses, starting with uh, verse 25. And then we continue reading as I develop the points and stuff. Amen? Luke chapter 14, verse 25 says this. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus. And turning to them, he says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brother and sisters, Yes, even their own life, such person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Those are really strong words of Jesus. Amen? And we're going to see what he means with hating our, our, our families and, our, and all that. I mean, and, and, but let's pray this morning and then we're going to continue. Father God, Father, you know... It's an honor to be here and preaching your word, Father, and preaching your word to the most important people in you, Father. That is your 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 sons and daughters who are here represented, Father. Father, and I pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, that you give me um, the guidance to preach and to speak as clear as possible as I can, Father. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will be working in our hearts, Father. I pray, Father, that you just speak to our hearts, challenge us, change our way of thinking about us following you, Father, and just help us to be the people that you want us to be, Father, and help us to follow you the one you the way that you want to be follow, Father. And we honor you, we praise you, and amen. And amen. I want to open with this um, statement: is that salvation costs you nothing. Listen what I'm saying. The salvation will cost you nothing because Jesus already paid the price for salvation. We receive it by grace. By putting our faith in Christ, we receive the salvation of our souls. Amen? There's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that, that, the money, there's no money that we can give to pay our salvation. It's only by Jesus that we can be saved. Amen? But following Jesus, it's going to cost us everything. Amen? To follow Jesus the way that he wants to be followed, it's going to cost us everything. And Jesus here, and before I continue reading, I want to tell you this. How many of you have ever received in your mail these false advertisements about home insurance and car insurance? That it says, this is the quote of your house. And then it even has your, your address, you know. And maybe you're paying like $800 a year for homeowners. And then it says there, you could save $300. You could save $600 or whatever. And then they have a quote there. Your quote, as of right now, is $500 or whatever. And then you're like, wow, I can save $300, you know. And then you call them. And then they begin to ask you all kinds of questions, you know. And then it goes from $500 all the way to $900. And it's like, oh, what happened with the quote of $500? Oh, no, this is just like a estimate, you know? We got to run your credit. We want to we wanna rent your house and all that. So, oh, there's the goal. My savings, they're going, you know? Jesus, it's not a false advertisement. Amen? Jesus is telling you right in the front how much is going to cost us to follow him amen remember there's all thousands of people are following jesus at this point and some of those people are following jesus because jesus healed them 
because they wanted to hear the words of the words of Jesus. Some of them they wanted to they were following Jesus because Jesus was feeding them. And so Jesus knows that very well. They know everybody of the 20,000 or the 10,000, whatever the size of the crowd. Jesus knows that not everybody is um, following him because of who he is. So Jesus throws these words. And verse 25 says this, that Jesus turns to the crowd and he says, these words in verse 26 if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother wife children brothers and sisters yes even their own life such person cannot be my disciple just imagine because this I tell you, I've been in so many conferences about church growing and trainings and all that kind of stuff, you know. But if you want your church to grow, this is not the way that you grow your church. Amen. This is too hard. We can say those things because people don't like those things. Right? And if you say those things, the people might start leaving. Right? In fact, sometimes Jesus say really hard things and then they the people begin to leave and the disciples begin to panic and say Jesus they're leaving the way that you are preaching is hard what did Jesus say if you want to leave too you can go right now I'm not saying that we be mean to people or we, or we should be uh, unrespectful to people but we are called to preach what God says amen we are not called to preach what people want to hear. We are, preached, we are called to preach what the Word says. And to submit our lives to God's Word. Not submit God to our lives. Amen. And Jesus is saying, that, saying something shocking for that crowd. And He turns to them because He knows that these people are not following because they love me. They follow Him because the things that I can do and I can give to them Jesus knows that so Jesus wants to let them know that to be able to follow him is going to cost them something amen and I'm going to give you four points here that what it's going to cost us to follow Jesus amen the first point is this is if we want to follow Jesus we have to love him of all amen Verse 26 says this, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, we already read that. Now, maybe you're questioning right now, maybe the question comes to your mind and says, Why does Jesus want me to hate my mom and my dad? Why did Jesus want me to hate my brothers and sisters? But I want to submit to you this morning that the word hate it's not he, Jesus is not saying that you have to be mean to your parents. You have to hate them and say, I don't want to have any relationship. I hate you, mom. I hate your wife. No, that's not what Jesus, the idea, what Jesus is giving him in, in this passage. Jesus is saying that we have to sacrifice in some cases. If we want to follow him, we're going to have to sacrifice the most important uh, relationship that we have in our lives. What are those important relationships and more close relationships in our lives? Our, ch our children, our wives, our, our parents, right? Those are the most important close relationships that we will ever have in this life. And Jesus is saying, if you are not willing to sacrifice the love for them, because of you, because you're following him, me, you can't be my disciple. Why is Jesus saying this? Because remember, let's say Peter. Peter is the only one we know, as far as the, the, the Bible telling us, that he was married. And I'm assuming that he had children, you know. The Bible doesn't say, or it's not very clear, that doesn't give details if he had children or not. But the fact that he was married, Amen. So we know that Peter was married, married. So in some cases, he will travel with Jesus for weeks, 
and for months to preaching to the to the town nearly towns there so Peter had to leave his wife to go with Jesus I don't know if you're getting the, the picture that I'm giving here I'm more, more clear now it's not that I hate you wife it's the you know what I have to sacrifice Jesus called me to follow him I have to follow him he called me to follow him just imagine the 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 wife you know the sacrifice that even the wife has to do that my husband is going to follow this rabbi and I'm not gonna see him for months maybe for weeks and this is the exact this is what Jesus is saying he's not saying that he needs to hate his wife or his mom or his dad he's simply saying that my love your love for me has to be a different category and if you're not willing to sacrifice in some cases, sometimes, then you can't be my disciple. Amen? You can't be my disciple. Now, the first point here is that to follow Jesus, we have to love him above all. Amen? The second point I want to give is that if we want to follow Jesus... We have to carry our cross. Luke, let's see what um, verse 27 says. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Now for us, 2,000 years after, here, here in the U.S., we don't have the same picture of, of them, of the cross. Amen? For us, the cross is like a sign of victory, Jesus um, um, have, big, have have victory over dead, and and we, we we when we see a cross, we see Jesus. No, now remember, this is two thousand years ago when the Romans were oppressing the Jews, Jewish people, and everybody who thought for a moment they can rebel against the Romans, what would they happen to them? They will be crucified. That's what Jesus was crucified. That's what many others were crucified who rebelled against Rome. Now, the picture is very different when Jesus is spoken this word. He's saying, if you don't carry your cross, you can't be my disciple. For us, it's the cross is victory, praising God, you know. But for them, it's like, uh-oh, I might have to die. You know what I'm saying? The picture is different. And the way that we relate and the way that we read these words now 2,000 years ago doesn't have the same impact that they have in their lives. Amen? Because we live in a free in a country that you have freedoms, you can pray, you can come to the church, and you can you have freedom until this day, at least until today. Amen? We don't know in a few years. But as of right now, we have the freedom. Now, I hear sometimes very silly things, and I wanna, I don't want to offend anybody. But we take it this so lightly that sometimes we say, oh, this morning my car wasn't running on. That must be my cross that I have to carry for following Christ. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but that's not really what Jesus meant when he was saying these words. Amen? Sometimes we say, well, I couldn't find a parking lot in Walmart because it's crazy. It's a lot of cars, and I have to park all the way to the back. That's my cross to fall because of following Christ. That's not your cross. Amen? So what Jesus is saying is totally a different, deep meaning that we have in our lives, that, that we understand in our lives. Let me tell you what the cross meant to those people who were listening to this, saying these words. The cross men literally are going to die because the person who were carrying the cross there were people who were condemned to die amen in fact history tells us that they put they will crucify people right there right right there in the main street of the city so when the people the jewish people will go and do their will travel or will do their normal routines of lives and activities they will see those people right there being crucified and they remind them about if you ever 
rebel against Rome, this is what's going to happen to you. So just can, can you imagine going to the, the store or going to the market and seeing this cross and people dying there? See, we don't have the same picture in our minds because we live in a different society now. But what Jesus is saying is this. If you're not willing to die for me, you can't be my disciple. You can't be my disciple. Because Jesus knows that in a few years after he says these words, many of the disciples were going to be persecuted. And we know for, for a fact in history that all of his, Jesus' disciples die horrible death because of fallen Jesus. Amen? Only, what's his name, um, John, live a long life. But many of them, they die horribly because of following Jesus. So Jesus said, was telling them right on the front and says, If you're going to follow me, you got to know that you're going to live your life. You know that you, it's going to come a time where you're going to have to pay a price for following me. See, Jesus is not a false advertisement. Amen. Jesus is not a false advertisement. He's telling you right in front all the disclosures so you don't have a, any surprise when you have to pay the price. Amen? Now, what does that mean to us then, carrying our cross? Well, obviously, we don't get crucified right now, you know, uh, literally. But carrying our cross now can mean... a can mean a bunch of things. Maybe because following Jesus, you're being ridiculed in your job. Maybe because you wanna, you're here a, um, um, if you're, you're a young person, and you wanna follow Christ, and you, they invite you to do things, your friends that, that you're not feeling comfortable to do because you are following Christ, and they might make fun of you, might ridicule you because, oh, this is the little the Christian. The one who doesn't do anything wrong. And they ridicule you in front of people. And they laugh at you. That might be the cross. That is the cross. Because you're suffering for the cause of Christ. Amen? That's the, that's the prize that some of us, the people who wants to follow Christ the way he wants to be followed, we need to pay the price. Amen? Maybe you are a young woman. You're a young, a young guy who wants to weigh into marriage to um, have a relationship with your wife. Maybe you're not giving in into this, living a life of sexual activity before marriage. And maybe people, you feel the pressure of people in your school or in your college or whatever, you feel the pressure that you have to do, and you have to do that to be cool or to be like everybody else. And you feel the pressure because the Bible says that that's a sin in God's eyes. Amen? And you have to Endure all the pressure and all the ridicule that comes and the laughs of the people because the way you live. That's your cross. You're paying a price for following Jesus. Amen? And that's exactly what Jesus is referring to. It's not any other thing that's suffering but for the, for the cause of Jesus, of following Him. Amen? The third point is If we want to follow Jesus, we have to count the cost. Amen. Now, a year ago, how many of you guys have any project that you haven't finished yet? You started a project a year ago or a few weeks ago you haven't finished? <laughs> well, I started a project, I started a project um, August of 2020, last year. I had a, a leak under my house. For many months, and you know, it just the, the the water just increases. You know, the water bill increases, and then the more you leave it, the bigger the the, the rip becomes, and then it leaks more water and more water. So I decide, okay, I don't have six thousand dollars to call a plumber and repipe or whatever fix. They have to um, we have to um, find you know break the the tile, the 
concrete and try to find the, how you say, the, the leak. They say, well, I don't have that kind of money. And guess what I say? I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> I'm going to save myself five or $6,000. I'm going to replumbing the whole house myself. So I started, right? Started really encouraged, like, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to tackle this. I'm a DIYer. That's what I call it nowadays. Huh? <laughs> of course, I have a few, like, I'm not a plumber, but I have an idea what, you know, all that, because I've done it before. Not like completely a house replumbing, but have some one, some some idea that I was doing. So I began to, you know, uh, buy all the pipe and then running it through the bathroom, running it through everywhere, you know. So I started making a lot of holes in the walls and then holes in the. In the <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> so I started. And I say, it's going to take me a month, I say. It's going to take me a month to this. But for me to put, um, you know, the, uh, the pipe, when, when, when you get to the, to the bathrooms, then I have to open the walls, and then I have to connect it. So then one project leads to another project, because I was opening walls inside of the shower so I can connect to the pipes and stuff. Then I end up remodeling the whole bathrooms <laughs> so I finished this last week I finished the last bathroom I was doing complete remodel so it's taking me from August all the way to April to finish that part I'm always I, I'm almost I'm sorry 90% I just have to patch everything now but I, when I finished like I'm, last Monday when I finished the last bathroom I was like victory you know it's like ah, oh, feels so good you know what I mean I don't have to be dealing with putting tiles and you know putting toilets back and all that crazy stuff you know anyway I finished that part I still but it's crazy because when I started I started really really like very energetic yeah, I'm gonna do this I'm gonna tackle this but as the months goes by you know, with family, with church, and all that. You know, so you're tired, and you, you want to do it, you know. And you say, oh, I'll do it next, next week, and whatever, you know. It's not that urgent, you know. Then then uh, uh, Thanksgiving came, and then Christmas came, and then the New Year's came. <laughs> and every time that I will pass and see the walls, I say, it reminds me of my, you know, my craziness or whatever, you know. The point I'm giving is this. That if we're going to follow Christ... We have to count the cost. Amen? Look what it says here in verse 28. It says, Suppose if one of you wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay down the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you. Saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Amen? So what is Jesus saying? If you want to follow me, not only you have to leave me, uh, love me with everything you have. In fact, this is our, uh, the first commandment. What is this? We got to love our God. We have no other gods beside him. Amen? So that's the first thing we have to do. And Jesus says, enforcing that, and says, if you want to follow me, you have to love me. You must not have other gods before me. Family, friends, wives, children. You have to love me first. Amen? And he says, you have to, also if you want to follow me, you have to carry your cross. We already talked about it. And then the third thing is that you, if you want to follow me, you have to count the cost. Amen? How much is going to cost you, you who are listening to me, what Jesus is referring to? Maybe your family is going to kick you out because now you're following me? Because you're not in Judaism anymore? Because you're not following their traditions? Your family, you might... Have to lose your family for following him, for following me. I'm sorry. 
And Jesus is saying, and look at how good Jesus is, because Jesus is not a false advertisement. Jesus is telling you, go back, in other words. Count, think really what you're gonna do. Count the cost. And when you're ready to make a decision, then come and follow me. Amen? It's not just praying this prayer and that's it. It's not just praying a prayer and that's it. You really have to understand that following Jesus is going to imply a whole, your whole life to follow Jesus. Amen? Yes, a prayer can begin that journey, but it doesn't stop there. You have to give it all to Jesus. Amen? You have to be willing to people to ridicule you at work. You have to be willing to um, uh, people in your family to say things bad about you because now, now this is the Christian. Now he doesn't do the things that we do. Now he doesn't hang out with us and do the same things that we do. Did you understand what I'm trying to say? And Jesus is telling, telling us and telling them, go back, count the cost. And see if you're really willing to follow me. Because if you don't, if you just make a decision just based on the emotions, or based just in your emotions or what feels good right now, then you might not be able to endure what it's coming to you. Amen? And you will be, you will be um, giving up in the middle of the race. And then everybody, all your family is going to make love of you because you started and you didn't finish it. I don't know if that makes sense to you. And that's what Jesus is telling us, my brothers and sisters, today is, is that if we want to follow him, we have to count the, the cost. What is going to cost you? What is going to cost you, you, you to follow him, really? Now, the next point that I have and the last point is here is this. It's that if we want to follow Christ, we have to pay the price. It's not enough just counting the cost. You have to be willing to pay the price. We have to be willing to pay the price. Amen? Now, how many of you guys like to do uh, um, um, goals or, I say, uh, plans for the future? Some of you, don't be afraid. If you like that, it's good, you know. But how many of us knows the plans and goals are not enough. Amen. We have to do something about it to accomplish that plan. Amen. So it's not enough for these people to count only the prize. They have to be willing to take the step to follow Jesus. Amen. And that's what Jesus is telling. And look at verse, verse 33 says to 35 says this. In the same way, it says, those of you who do not give up everything, listen, gave up everything, everything what? Everything that I just told you cannot be my disciple. Verse 20, 34 says, salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how it can be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor, nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear, Jesus said. In other words, if you are listening to these words, really pay attention to what, what I'm saying. Amen? So it's saying, if you have wants to follow me, you have to pay the price. You have to be willing to pay the price. And let me tell you something. Many of our brothers and sisters are paying the price right now in countries outside of the United States. See, we live in this bubble of Christianity here in the United States where it's so easy to come to church, where we don't have to pay any high prices in our lives. To follow Jesus. It's easy to follow Jesus, right? You're here. We have good music. Um, hopefully a good preaching, you know. And prayer. And you have good ministry here. And it's easy to come. And even though sometimes people don't want to come. 
How crazy is that? But we have, we have it really easy, and we don't have to lose our lives for following Christ. But right now, in 2021, people are dying in other countries for the same faith that you and I share. They're, they're paying the price of following Christ. Now, why in the world do we think that we don't have to pay any price? Why in the world do we think that Christianity is all about what God can make me successful? God can make me this. God can give me uh, happiness. God can give me this. And I'm not against because God is a God, is a good father. Amen. But we also have to pay a price. Amen. It's going to come a point when we have to pay a price. Amen. Like all of the, uh, uh, through, through the history of Christianity, many hundreds and thousands of people give their lives to follow Christ and for you and me to be here today. Amen. They give their lives. They pay a price. And how in the world we come to this idea where the Jesus is all about giving you success in your life. That is all his concern is to give you success so you can have a prideful, um, I say, spirit or whatever. No, my brothers and sisters, that's not Christianity. That's not the gospel of Jesus. Yes, God has promised us that he will provide for all our needs. Amen. He is going to heal us when it's his will. Amen. But we have to pay a price at some point. And, and listen to me. We have to preach the gospel. Amen. We have to preach what God, how God wants to be followed. Know how we think that he wants to be followed. Amen. Because if I preach, if I follow Christ the, one, the, the way that I think he wants to be followed, then I'll be the most comfortable Christian in the world. Right. Because I don't like to suffer. I don't like to, I, I, I want everything to be my way. I want everything to, God to give me everything that I want and I desire. Right. But that's not Christianity. That's not Christianity. Christianity is, yes, he is a good father. Yes, he died for you. He loves you. Yes, he will provide for you because he says he will provide for you. Not all your wants, but all your needs. Amen? And he, will, he loves you. But it's also true that at some point, we're going to have to pay a price for following him. Amen? And he's not, I don't believe he's concerned to give you success in your life. I don't, I don't think God is consumed so you can be successful. I think he's consumed for you and I to become more like Christ. Amen? And that can bring all kinds of, of um, it's a price that we need to pay for that. Now, in the beginning of my message, I say that salvation will cost you nothing, right? Because we know it's only by Jesus he paid the price for our salvation. And I'm not talking about you're going to pay the price for your salvation. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about you have to pay your price if you want to follow Christ the rest of your lives. Amen? You and I have to be willing to pay a price. And we need to know that right from the get-go. Because if you don't understand that, then if you buy into this God success um, gospel thing, then you're only going to go until everything is good and good in your life and God, God is, looks like God is giving you success, but then as soon as you hit a, a, a sickness, as soon as you hit a financial crisis or whatever, then you're going to start following Christ because what is that? God is not giving me what He promised me that He was going to give me, right? So we need to understand that, yes, it's going to be times, and I'm not saying that Christian, the, the Christianity is horrible. I'm not saying that, and if you get in that idea, I'm sorry if I'm trying, if I'm giving you that idea that's not at all what i'm saying but what i'm what i'm what i'm do saying is this that at some point we have to make we have to be suffering for christ my brothers amen we have to be willing to suffer for christ and if not willing to suffer for christ then we're not his disciples amen in fact and i'm, I'm going to finish with this today is that when jesus got arrested that night what happened to the disciples? 
discipline. Why? Because they were terrified. They were afraid to die as well. Amen? And, not, and I'm not telling you that I'm in this level of Christianity when I say, yes, I'll, be, I'll die for Christ. I'm, I'm as God in my life. And I, my prayer is, God, help me to come to that faith in my own life. That when things are start getting really hard for following you, that I can stand in your arms. And I can stand through anything that the enemy wants to throw at my life. So I'm not telling you that I'm in that level. But that has to be our focus in life. That has to be our goal, to become more like Christ, to be able to pay our price for following him. Because as, as we go in as a society, I don't think it's going to be too long since until we start being persecuted in some way. Amen. And we have to be ready. We have to really count the price. The, I'm sorry, count the, the cost. Am I really going to follow this Jesus? Or when every the pressure comes and when you're going to be maybe going to jail or maybe have to sacrifice some things, then you might not be able to do it because you buy into this Christianity of everything is going to be good for you all the time. But that's not the Bible. And that's not what Jesus said here. He says, he turned to the crowds and he says, if you're not willing to die and sacrifice everything that you have for me, you cannot be my disciple. We can believe that we are his disciples. We can come to church and we can kind of like uh, deceive ourselves. But if we're not really willing to pay the price, then we're not his disciples. Amen? It's just what it is. It's just how it is. So I want to encourage you today. I want to challenge us today to really think about and maybe some of us, we've been following Christ because somebody tells us that Christianity is a really good living and, and, and we have everything and we're going to be successful because we are Christians. Maybe you buy into this idea. But maybe you have to rethink that idea and say, maybe I have to sacrifice in a few years from now, 10 years, 20 years, maybe I have to sacrifice and pay the price for following Christ. And be honest with yourself. Am I really, at this point in my life, am I really um, willing to do that or not? And be honest with you. And if you're not willing, then if we are not willing, then we have to recommend ourselves to God and say, God, I don't want to live this Christianity I don't want to buy into this Christianity that tells me that everything is going to be good. I want to follow you the, one, the way that you want to be followed, knowing that I might have consequences for following you at some point in my life. Amen? Let's consider today. Amen? And um, I want to end today is that what I just opened, the statement that I opened is salvation will cost you nothing. It's by grace of God. But following Jesus will cost you everything. And I want to close with that with you. You have that in your, in your mind. Amen. Let's close our eyes and let's pray and let's challenge ourselves. And I want to invite you to stand up this morning. And maybe if you're watching us online and or any of you who are here present, maybe you haven't really counted the cost for following Christ maybe you somehow believe that following Jesus was going to be all pretty and nice and you're always going to have success and you're always going to have a lot of money and you're always going to be healthy but that's not what Jesus promised Jesus promises to be with us until we die. Jesus promises that he will provide for us all our needs. Yes. Jesus promises that his spirit will be in us. Jesus promises that if we finish the race following him until the end, we will be given the crown of glory. Amen. 
So if you somehow have believed that you don't have to suffer because you're a Christian, then I want you to reconsider if you're really Christian, if you really believe in the right message of the gospel. Because the right message of the gospel is we trust in Jesus for our salvation. We live our lives in obedience to him, carrying our cross. And because we're carrying our cross and we're submitting our lives in obedience to him, that implies that the world is not going to be happy with us. And that's just a fact. But if you're willing to say, yes, Jesus, I'm going to follow you and I might lose my family. I might be really cute at work. People may, might find on me. But I want to follow you. I want to live in obedience to you. Then you can be his disciple. Amen. Let's pray. This, this morning. Father God, I pray right now, Father, for the ones who are watching it online, Father. Father, I pray, Father, for the ones who are here in this room, Father, that some of us, Father, if we be honest with ourselves right now, Father, if the things go really bad for us as a Christian, Father, um, I really, if we're really honest, I don't know how many of us we were really willing to die for your sake or to go to prison. Father, or to face persecution. Father, but that's the life that you call us to live, Father. And yes, Christianity has so many beautiful things and wonderful things. Yes, we feel your Holy Spirit. We have, um, when we are feeling, um, Father, uh, down, Father, your Holy Spirit comes and brings us life to our lives. Those are beautiful things that we got to experience by having this, this spirit in our lives, Father. But there are some times, like, like Psalm 23 says, when we go to the darkest valleys in our lives. And that Psalm says that you will be there with us, Father, in the darkest times, in the persecution, in the ridicule of other people for the sake of following you. You're going to be there with us. You are there with us, Father. You have not leaving us because we're facing any persecution, Father. You're still with us. You promise to be with us, Father. And I pray, Father, that we can come to the terms in our lives, Father. We can count the cost like Jesus asked us to count the cost and really think about if we want to serve you, if we are willing to pay the price, Father. And I pray for every person here, including my life, Father, if we're not ready, Father, to take that step, Father, that you give us conviction that your Holy Spirit, Father, give us the love that we need to love you more than anything else, Father, to give that a step forward and say, yes, Father, I'll pay the price, whatever it is, for my life. And I know that many of us here are going to pay a higher price than others, Father, just whatever you have called us to sacrifice, Father, but uh, that we be willing to do it, Father, for the sake of knowing you and the sake of loving you, Father, and to put our eyes and the things above, like Paul says, and knowing the things of this earth, Father. Father, I know that this message is not very popular, Father. This message is not an easy receiving message, Father, but I know that this message, Father, can be the game changing for many of us in this room and many of us watching online, Father. To live our sinful, sinful lives, Father. To go and live a life of obedience to you, Father. That it's more than just praying a prayer, Father. It's giving and committing our lives to you and sacrificing things for the sake of you, Father. But we sacrifice everything, Father. But we know that we will have, Father, an eternal Reward, Father. Not in this world, Father. We might not be the successful people or the most influential people in this world, but we will be, Father, the people who will be um, reigning in your kingdom, Father, and and, and and the kingdom when you come and set your kingdom in this earth, Father. That's what we're looking forward, not to this world, Father. Father, help us to have that conviction in our lives and to make that decision for our own lives, Father. 
thank you, Jesus, and we love you and we honor you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. God bless you. And then I hope every one of us, we can pay the price for following Jesus. Amen.